It comes as some relief to know that the financial wealth generated by the economic boom was not all squandered, but during the Celtic Tiger era, a number of transport projects in particular were put in place that will benefit Dubliners for many years to come. We have two new pedestrian bridges over the Liffey, the Port Tunnel, the recently opened Calatrava designed Samuel Beckett Bridge, while not forgetting the practically completed M50 upgrade, and last but not least, the Lewis. However, these large projects do not come cheap as the cumulative cost ran into billions. And do they make it any easier to get around the city? After all, motorists are being asked to drive at 30 kilometres or 18 miles per hour. We have city centre free flow traffic systems that seem to take you through Port Leash to get from O'Connell Street to Grafton Street, while the hard pressed motorist has been asked to fork out €1.30 for a litre of petrol. So is there any good news? Well, today we're going to look at two initiatives that have hit the streets in the past few months that are eco-friendly, wallet-friendly, and cost little or nothing to operate. It might seem that they've been around for ages, but Dublin City's free bicycle scheme has only been in place for six months, having been launched by Dublin City Council in September 2009. In a public-private partnership arrangement, Dublin City Council are working in tandem with the European outdoor advertising giant JC Deco, so that the service is provided practically free of charge. JC Deco operates similar schemes in Paris, Brussels and Madrid, whereby they provide the bicycles, the stands and other equipment at no cost, accepting that in return they are given permission to erect dozens of their distinctive display advertising signs on footpaths throughout the capital. Now the first thing those of you in my age category will notice that this latest development in two-wheel technology bears an uncanny resemblance to the Rally 20, the biggest selling but not very trendy bicycle in the 1970s. So let's find out what the users think. Yeah, do you find the bikes themselves, are they reliable? They are, they're very strong, um, really strong bikes. Uh, the tyres are quite thick as well, so you don't get many punctures and they've, they kind of have a reflective light on them as well, so it's quite safe for travelling at night time as well if you're on them. Most people think it's a free service, but there is a cost if you ride them for a certain amount of time. Do you find you have to pay or, or is it a free service? No, I have the yearly subscription, so I think it was €25 Euro at the time and that covers it. So as long as I don't go over half an hour, I don't have to pay any more. Tell me, is it dangerous to cycle around the streets of Dublin? Yes, I find it dangerous sometimes because um, in many areas uh, no cycling, cycling lanes are existing, in existence. and. Um, I say yes, it is sometimes it is dangerous. Yeah. And compared to other European cities that you've probably cycled in, is Dublin uh, easier or more difficult to cycle? In terms of traffic, I find it easier, but in terms of uh, cycling lanes, it'll be more difficult as I can compare with Paris, London, and um, um, Amsterdam, Vienna too. Uh, it'll be much easier there. Yeah, yeah. Well, the weather, I think, in Dublin today is as good as any of those cities. Yes, it's lovely. Just lovely. EcoCabs are a new age rickshaw bicycle with an eye-catching ad wrap that allows the advertising to pay for the cost of the vehicle and the driver's salary so that the trip is entirely free for the grateful passenger. First and foremost, do you have to be fit to do this work? Um, not particularly fit. It, uh, we generally do about 40 kilometres a day, so it is, uh, there is a relative uh, level of fitness that is needed, but uh, you don't need to be super fit or anything. I wasn't when I started but um, they do weigh about 150 kilograms, so you do need to have a bit of muscle built up, but not too much, not right. too much. And do you have to know your way around the city, or do you have a sat-nav, or how do you get around? Uh, we just, yeah, it's just general knowledge. Uh, we obviously go through basic training to make sure that uh, we know uh, when we start first, uh, we know where we're going, things like that. And tell me, uh, the service is free, the, the passenger doesn't pay? Nope, not at all. Uh, they're not obliged to pay anything at all. It's a free service that's sponsored by the Northern Ireland Tourist Board. We also uh, have 7UP uh, Eco Cabs also, and there's a few other uh, in the pipeline coming through too. Yeah. And tell me, uh, tips, do you get a tip or do people usually leave a tip? Uh, sometimes people tip, but uh, they're not obliged at all to tip. Um, yeah. there's, no, there's no obligation. It's completely paid for by the, by the sponsor. And uh, can you tell us what's the most interesting passenger that you've actually had in the eco cab? Uh, it was Johnny Cash's brother. He was doing a tour and just got to talk to him and we met Elvis and people like that. So it was very interesting to talk yeah, to him. Well, certainly there are very few uh, people from Dublin or Tipperary who've met Johnny Cash's brother. Exactly. The last question, and I've been asked to ask you this, but do you have to be good looking to get this job? Mm, well, obviously not. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we've seen two alternative ways of travelling around the city for free. Both seem to serve their intended 
purpose and are catching on with Dubliners and visitors alike. Now I've tried my hands and my feet with both, so which one would I choose to take me home? I think I've made up my mind.